Alright, hello everyone. Uh, this is Russ, and I'm going to be uh, showing you a picture slideshow of how I built my Slinky um, Toroids. So, thanks for Jack Schultz, as he uh, originally had this idea, I believe, uh, and I've taken it to another level. So, here we go. In this picture here, I got my Slinky. My coil is inside of it. I, uh, there's actually two Slinkies here, two junior Slinkies. Um, that way, there's more surface area to coat. Uh, be a little more flat, I would hope. Here you can see where I've uh, melted the plastic together. Um, it's uh, it works pretty well. It's pretty tedious, but uh, it can be done. It's hard to get square when I got it done, but it worked. Uh, here you can see I made a jig. Uh, the reason I made the jig, uh, there's three nails and a piece of wood, and it holds up my coil of wire that I have inside here. These are going to be high voltage toroidal wound coils that I'm uh, designing or making, and uh, there's going to be two of them. So I've got my coil in there of wire. It's number 30 gauge. And uh, basically I slid that in there and then uh, melted the slinkies together. The jig is just to hold it off the table. Uh, next I took a um, what used to be a VCR head that fit perfectly on the inside between the, the slinky. So it wedged the slinky between that and my coil. Uh, here's a better shot here. You can see what it is. It actually wedged it against there and it held it really, really tight. Um, here they are sitting, uh, waiting for me. You saw this in one of my videos if you watched it all. Uh, another photo of that. Um, I built two of these. Um, that way um, I could wrap two different coils on here, two different patterns, and uh, see what I had from there. Um, now the other thing I got is... Uh, what I, my idea to coat these was paper mache, and it was a great idea. Um, it worked really well at first, and then I had an issue. The coil uh, or the the form here, the toroid. When I got done, it wasn't to par. I uh, like it to be a little better, but I'll uh, use what I got. So here in this picture, you can see my slop. This is nothing more than flour and water. I boiled it. Um, probably boiled it a little too much kinda got all nasty but it it this stuff dries rock hard it's amazing so there's my solution um, here you can see I've taken really thin paper um, super thin paper and wrapped two layers worth so I went from the top wrapped around down towards the bottom uh, this worked pretty good I made the paper strips just long enough so where they didn't get uh, into my uh, centerpiece there um, here you can see they're both done like I said, there's two wraps on the outside. Uh, here I have, uh, they're just drying. You can see how the paper kind of shrunk up on there. You can see the ribs of the slinky. Um, that was pretty flat. It worked really well. I ran one strip around the outer circumference uh, after I got done. Here you can see I pulled the center pieces out. Uh, that didn't go too well because the stuff was stuck to it. But it was all right. Uh, it actually loosened the slinky up, so now the inner coil is kind of floating around a little bit in there um, because I have no support in the center, as you can tell. Uh, here's another shot of that. Um, moving on. Okay, so after I got done um, with the first bit and I took the center out, you can see I put tape around there. That was merely to hold the slinky in place. Kind of wanted to move around in there, and that way it pulled tight. Everything was tight that way. Uh, here you can see I've done the inside now. I took little strips that I cut off and did just the inside. This is a closer picture of that. Um, and then when this dried, here's a picture of it dried. And this actually turned out really well. As you can see, if you look on the outside and around the outside, uh, here's a better picture maybe. The, it, it dried really flat, and I was really happy with it. Uh, and then I went on to do another layer all the way around with one piece of paper to make it a solid more of a solid piece and that's where I ran into trouble so if you do these I would suggest just doing it like that don't coming back unless your slinky is tight and you know it stayed tight here's a picture I hung the uh, the coil of wire inside of it I hung it on that so I could wrap it all the way around what happened was basically um, everything got wet there it is drying everything got wet and um, basically it shrunk and shriveled everything up and everything got out of whack and then I had really deep crevices where some of the the slinky portions were I just kinda upset me because I this took a while to crochet uh, or mache, paper mache 
Okay, here they are dried all the way around, all the wraps. Uh, like I said, you know, they turned out well, but uh, not to my standard. I, I'm going to be using them because this took too much time to go back and redo. It'll work for now. So there they are. Look pretty good. Um, here I put some primer on them. Now you can really see where the ribs stand out. Um, it's still really flat, but it just, I just drove me crazy. Uh, here you can see, if you look right down the center crease, you see a little crinkle. That's what I'm talking about. So after I did the second wrap, or the third wrap, uh, it, it, the whole thing got moist, and that's what happened. That's what kind of upset me. But they still worked out good. They're still flat, nice and round. Um, here's another picture of it primered. Uh, both of them there hanging. Um, here I put some uh, nice silver paint on there. They look really shiny, really nice. Um, so yeah, this actually matches... Uh, here's a picture of the I printed out a 36 by 18 Taurus it matches almost dead on uh, here's a picture of it sitting right on top of that you can see the inner circle uh, so basically this should be perfect uh, with that math the 13 I'm sorry the 36 by 18 it should match up identically to that Taurus um, here you can see I've got my jig started from uh, Tom Barrett um, thank to him for posting a video. If you haven't seen that, uh, it basically shows how to mark the um, Taurus out with the Randy Powell fashion uh, grid or with the Marco Rodin grid, I should say. And then you can go on to wind the Powell coil on top of it. I'll link that um, video. I'll put that in my uh, uh, thing here so you can see it. Uh, just look for it in the description. Uh, here you go is the jig. Got the bottom. Uh, made up with the markings on it. There you can see, I've got uh, 36 points around the outside. So I'm making a 36 by 18. There's my coil chilling in there. Another picture. Okay, here now I've got it marked. I've got it marked for, um, I believe, uh, let's see, 18 points around the outside. This is just half, so I'm just doing nine. And I've got it all the way around. I just did the ha uh, half of it in this video. Just want to get this video posted so everybody that's, uh, if anybody is waiting on this, here it is. So, um, there it is marked again, still marked. I used a dry erase marker, I'm sorry, a wet erase marker. A wet erase marker as my lines, as my grid. So there's my grid, there's my first uh, line. This is marking out the uh, where the diamond pattern would start. I just hit each point, that would make my grid. Um, here I've got quarter of it done or so. Uh, you can see it looks pretty nice. There I've got all one direction, all the way around. Uh, here, same thing. Uh, there's my wife, uh, and then she got sucked into the vortex right there, as you can see. Uh, okay, so I got both. Um, <laughs> I got both uh, cross patterns on there, and I did that with permanent marker, permanent red uh, marker, worked pretty well, and uh, then I was going to go back and wipe it off. So there you go, I've wiped off the wet erase with a damp rag, and now I only have my permanent marker, which would be my uh, cross pattern. So it's turned out really well. Um, I mean, I can't complain, I shouldn't complain, because it really did turn out well. And um, yeah, so I'll be wrapping the Randy Powell version, and uh, I'm going to got a little clip here at the end that's not a slideshow, and uh, show you what they look like in person. So here we go. Thanks. Okay, so here's my slinky covered toroids. Check it out. Yeah. Um yeah. That's what I got. Um what's really cool about this toroid is the fact that I printed these out. These are 18 by 36. And what's pretty cool is that these match up pretty much dead on okay so the outside's slightly small but really if you look at it from above it's it's actually about right so this actually turned out almost identical to the size that I wanted it to be and I didn't plan that <clears throat> my coil of uh, wire that I wrapped on the inside is inside of here you can see okay that's pretty sweet. Then I made this jig, thanks to Tom Barrett. I believe I pronounced that right. Um, I'll put a link of his video 
on uh, on there. So here's my jig. I marked this out. Um, it's hard to see. 130. I'm sorry. 36 points. Um, 10 degrees apart for this torus. Um, here's a nice printout. I printed out that fit perfectly on here. Um, I don't know if this is the proper website I got it, but this is a very nice chart. Um, basically, I set this in here as shown on Tom's video, which I'll link as well. Mark the uh, horizontal, as you saw in all my other stuff. And uh, now I have my lines marked on here. And I can wrap my coil around here. I uh, will be posting a video. Um, you see, I only did have this. I will be posting a video of the way I think this needs to be properly energized. I think that uh, the math, the people with the involved in the math of this, um, Vortex-based mathematics will like it and hopefully give me some information on it. Um, but basically, I'll explain that in the other video of how I think they should be energized. I, I've got the idea in my head, I just need to sit down and figure it out. So it might be a little while before I do that. Um, but that's it. This for us. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you guys can make some of these yourself now. Alright. See ya.